Kristen Tatar in the news again. OTB extends their reach in disc golf. Nick goes caddy. Weird happenings at the recent DGPT event. And stay tuned to the end of the episode for yet another discount code to save you some money. You're listening to The Disc Golf Show. That's right. You are listening to The Disc Golf Show. This is episode number 11 on the 20th of May, 2024. This episode brought to you in part by Final Nine Sports. Two locations in California, one in Rockland, one in Orangeville. Support local. You know you should. Do it. Just do it. There you go. My name is Justin with me today. This Nick, guy. that's me. That's right. It is you. Let's jump into it, Nick. What do we got? All right. First things first, let's get this out of the way. Okay. Because you're going to give me garbage for it, probably. Yeah, probably. Uh, nobody. Uh, uh. Okay. All right. A couple things about our beloved Kristen Tatar. Christine Tatar. I need to get used to that. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, first female, four digit, thousand rated. Yep. Awesome. Totally cool to see that finally happen. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Because it seemed like every time it was like, oh, come on, one, one, one point still. Right. Um, the other thing is she literally just yesterday, I think it was, mm -hmm. just, or might have been this morning, actually, just made a post stating that she will not be playing until mm -hmm. around July 12th for the Croco Open. Right. Due to, she's doing renovations at her house. Which is and awesome. and stuff all over the floor renovations right right she trips and breaks a rib a oh. rib dude a and, rib and, and here's the thing is like oh. a rib you don't even necessarily go to the hospital for that because you, you want to know you, why you can't they, they can't don't do, do anything. anything it has to mend yeah like the 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 best they can do is just kind of maybe wrap them but that's it like that there's nothing they can, they can't set it. It's a rib, dude, and depending on Ugh. which rib, like just breathing, oh, dude, just just breathing, just so breathing in and out. I'm hoping oh. it's like just a little, like a edge, little, a little fracture. Yeah, mm -hmm. not like a you know. Um, but she did make a make a post stating that, so we wish her a speedy recovery and yeah, not fun. Don't come back too soon, but come back soon. Right, you know what I mean, Eagle. Um, <laughs> another thing, uh, there is a new product that we, we recently, uh, came across. Yes. It's called discovery, mm -hmm. not D I S C, which no. you would think would be how it would be spelled. It's That's D -I -S how spell checker wants to yeah, D I S Q. So yes. discovery with a Q instead of a C. Um, mm. it looks like what it is, is a stamp of sorts in right. which it's a QR code that you actually log it in. And that way, when somebody finds it, they can see who logged it in and so whose disc it was, their, and you, their information there. So you could, right. I think, contact them through that app. And then an easier way, or I shouldn't say, an additional way right. in which you may be able to get your disc back. Now, would this be acceptable in the place of the PDGA standard where you have to have your name on it? Um, well, it would be a unique... Um, identifier, a unique, uh, QR worded? code. Yeah. It, technically. Yeah. You have to have a unique identifier. Now it doesn't have to be your name. It doesn't have to be anything. It just mm. has to be markings to distinguish your disc from somebody else's in case okay. slim chance in case right. somebody's throwing the exact same disc color stamp that is indistinguishable. Mm. But, um, then, yeah, I mean, then it would be, yeah. Okay. I, I think it's a great idea because it's going to be a single, uh, again, if it actually takes off, which it, it would be neat to see, it would be one place. So then anybody who picks it up, who let's say is in another state for some reason, or somebody's in your state, they find your disc, they fly home. Now it's in another state. If they happen to put it on there and you're, you have an account or something, then you could go on there and check your, I'm sure, account to where you go, oh, did I get a message from somebody? Right. That way it's one place. That way that person doesn't have to contact a local um, pro shop or they forgot and get back home and you're not, you're kind of SOL. Right. Um, but it's just a, again, like I said, it's more of an additional way to, for the possibility of getting your plastic back yeah. or your disc because yeah. you know, now things are 
more than just plastic. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I thought that's that's a cool thing. We'll we'll be getting some more that's information cool. on that. I'd love to see um, it and test it out because I, I have all kinds of questions about durability yeah. and how hard is it to remove that, and if you yeah. mess up a little bit of that QR code, will it still find it? Like. Yeah, that would I got, be good. I got like, questions. Yeah. Rough it up <laughs> yeah. a little bit. And yeah, see, see if, if it, it would work still. How yeah. it withholds. Like I'm, I'm yeah. very interested in how it creates it and how it actually stamps it. Yeah. But I guess we'll yeah. find out in maybe next episode. I hope so. All right. Um, another one is recently OTB and Discraft formed a partnership for a new course for a, uh, well, it's a three year sponsorship from Discraft. Um, for a new course, Failure Lake Disc Golf Course. Yep. Um, so it's from the people that are involved, from what I understand, the quality of course is going to be up there. So nice. um, they're looking at, you know, having it... Whenever these people start... These people, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Whenever the people involved in this... What do you mean, these people? In this course, um, get their hands on property like this, it's the goal of having it as being a tour stop. Right, right. Because all you're doing from here on out, I mean, even with the recent course that's supposed to go in here um, soon, um, yes, it's not going to be tour level, like pro tour level. Sure. But it's definitely like one of those in-between steps of like old school tour, way back in the day tour, and current tour level courses. So... The goal is always whatever plot of land you have, you want to make the best product you can Absolutely. and best course for people. So um, with the people that are involved in this, I, I do not see it being bad in any form. Right. So, um, yeah, shout out to OTB and Discraft for that. Uh, the other thing was recently um, the 2025 Champions Cup, mm -hmm. which is a major, mm -hmm. was announced for it to be coming to the recent location of the OTB Open. So yeah, Swinson Stockton. Swinson Golf Course, yeah. um, Swinson Park Disc Golf Course. Um, and I can get into that layout later on when gotcha. we talk about that. Yeah. But um, it will be, there's a couple things. One, it is the first both MPO and FPO major um, this again, the only reason I say that is because we did have a major here, uh, three mm -hmm. years ago, um, USWDGC oh, was okay. here in 2021. Um, so that's like the first, uh, overall major, I guess. Okay. But for both the MPO and FPO divisions, uh, being a major, it's the first one in West on the West coast since 2014, which was, wow. um, up in Oregon. So, which was pro worlds. Right. Uh, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to that because I'm already um, thinking we need to go to that. Yeah. So we'll mark that down on the calendar uh, right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and then another note here is that we also heard that good old Nate Doss is making Nate a return. Doss. And you. that is going to be at the this year's Beaver State Fling, which is coming up. Yeah, that's a good one to come back to, too. Yeah, yeah. So it's in his neck of the woods. I mean, literally. Well, yeah. So, um, why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, good shout out to him. I mean, we've seen him in person down here at Shady Oaks before. Yes. So, uh, really nice guy. Um, and we look forward to seeing where he's placing when he comes back. Yeah, it'll be interesting. That will be interesting. Yeah, because yeah. he has all, I mean, he's multiple major winner. So, like, yeah, he has that DNA in him. So, I, I mean, his name is Nate Doss. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. If you've been following you, disc golf for a while, should you know, know who he is. You know who he so, is. Yeah. yeah. So um, congrats for coming back and we yeah. look forward to seeing your I play at the Beaver State. Super Fling. excited for that, actually. Yeah. But also <laughs> we get into the meat of the stuff. Oh, yes. So there last weekend, there wasn't a pro tour event. However, there were some A tiers that came through. And there was a Pro Tour, but it was a European Pro Tour event, mm -hmm. which is good in and of itself. No, oh, yeah. Um, but there were a couple recent A tiers that we just wanted to notate. So All right. you wanna you wanna mention those? No, you you were on a roll. Oh, Keep okay. going. Sweet, buddy. sweet. Yeah. Um first one, which 
is uh, an event that everybody's heard of is a Las Vegas challenge um, presented by Innova. And the winners there will cruise on through this because, right. you know, they're just eight. They're eight years, right? They're big <laughs> just events. Tiers, These right? events are big events. Absolutely. Um, they've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. So um, MPO winner there was Connor Rock. So new name you may or may not have heard of. Um, FPO, Luke Lawrenson. Um, so shout out to Lucky, if you want to call her that. <laughs> right. um, and then on the same weekend was the, which I've had the pleasure of playing in the AM weekend of this event, oh. was when it was called the Steady Ed Memorial. Yes. But it is now called the, well, it's been called, I guess, for a little bit. Yes. 2024 Santa Cruz Masters Cup Pro yeah. presented by DGA. Um, and the winners there, MPO, Ezra Robinson, mm -hmm. which you've been seeing his name pop up a lot at all a the lot. events this year. Yeah. Um, and then FPO winner. I mean, you may have heard this person. Right. Owns guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, but she, maybe. she won that one. So, and then the other one, the European, the Europe DGP2, DGPT event mm -hmm. was the Copenhagen Open 2024. Yeah. Um, I and got, we had... I got to watch pretty much all of that one. Oh, did you watch that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. Um, well, you could fill me in on some of that stuff because oh, okay. I actually didn't watch... Like, oh, really? I, I saw clippets of that. Clip it? Snippets and clips. <laughs> clippets. No, clip I like clippets. Let's go with that. Uh, you heard it here first. Clippets. Yeah. So what happened? Uh, lots of stuff. Really good. Fun to watch. Okay. There all you right. go. Sweet. Um, M MPO winner. <laughs> I think it's Yessie. I think it's how you pronounce so. it, right? Niemannen? Niemannen, I was think your so. MPO winner. And then FPO winner, another big win. Evelina Salonen, yeah. um, which was it's just awesome to see. Like, I, I was talking with somebody recently about mm -hmm. the fact that she's found her putt. Oh, yeah. And, and this was uh, definitely a case of that as well. She was putting on a show for yeah. the most part, yeah. you know? I mean, yes, obviously she won, but uh, couldn't really fault much of her game. It was... It, classic evelina when her putt is on and it yeah. was and there yeah. you go enough said right yeah exactly so and then a big shout out to the captain himself <laughs> paul ulibari yep. um he was leading at the copenhagen open mm -hmm. um he didn't finish uh in first but he did finish in fourth and Still he tied for fourth five. and he had an ace that was his first time yeah. playing there and he had an ace and it was filmed so if you haven't seen it go find it um, it's a sweet ace and it, uh, obviously everybody erupts and, you know, oh, and yeah. excitement from it. But, um, yeah, it's always cool to see an ace on camera and big shout out to, to Yuli for that. Absolutely. Now, the big event, now, the big event was, it was, <laughs> don't see us. yeah. Um, so just recently 17th through the 19th was the 2024 OTB open. And that is yes. in Stockton here. That is again, like I said, where the. Um, major is going to be coming next year. Uh, I was lucky enough to caddy for uh, buddy of the show, Roger, mm -hmm. um, for Saturday and Sunday. Yep. I wish I would have caddied on Friday. Do oh. <sighs> you know why? Why? I'll tell you why. Why? Because he got carded with Yuli. Oh, he got cool. carded with Yuli in the first yeah. round, so that was super that was awesome. Really he, he mentioned a couple of things to me. Um, one of them is um, people are taller in person. <laughs> so re why I'm saying okay. this, why I'm saying this is, let's say, what height do you think Yuli is? Uh, I, I mean, now no I said idea. he's taller in person, so you're yeah, going to go I'm higher like, than uh, six foot. No, no, he's five eleven. He's okay. 5'11". Okay. okay. However, okay. however, and no knocking on you, okay, Yuli? Um, when you do your videos standing next to Germ, it doesn't help. It doesn't, it no. doesn't, it doesn't help. No. Germ makes everybody look small. So Because he's big yeah, Germ. So, so when I got there on Saturday, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, all the pros are there and everything and... and uh, because I'm caddying, uh, it was kind of cool because I got to go up on the stage and they had like couches and stuff for the mm -hmm. people waiting to tee off because you have to be there five minutes before. Yeah. Um, all that stuff. And w I saw him walking by and I'm like, Roger was not lying. He is taller than I thought he'd be. 
<laughs> in person. <laughs> right. I'm not saying that he was short, but he just, I didn't realize he was almost six foot tall. Right. Because in the videos, Big Germ makes him look yeah. tiny. Yeah. He's not um, Tom Cruise. They're not going to yeah. put him on the same no. level. No, he's Germ. not. What is that? Just what is he's he's Five, Cruise. six? Five, that guy's tiny. four? He's like five, four. Yeah. Is so he? Something Cruise like is five, four? Five, two, five, four, somewhere in there. He's yeah. really small for you. Um, but yeah. So I, you know who else I saw there? Well, I saw yeah. everybody. You know who is a tank? Who? Albert Tom. Which he's a tank okay. in video too. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> so we're parking, right? And mm-hmm. I think it was actually when we were leaving the first day. Wasn't able to stay there. I mean, we got there a little bit early so Roger could uh, practice and stuff. But right. after we were done, he had stuff to do with his family. So we basically left right after the event right. or after the round was over. But um, we go out to his trailer and right next to it is a car. The car, I want to say, is a Scion XA. Okay. Do you know what an XA is? No. It's a little roller skate oh, of a car. It's tiny, okay. And and uh, I guess on Friday, Roger had said something to him of like, is that, is that, is that your tour car? Because <laughs> how do you drive that? And he right. joked. He was like, oh, I pulled the back seat out. <laughs> um, right. But uh, yeah, he was there. Obviously, all the other guys, they got some pictures and stuff like that of mm. the practice putting area and all the people that were there. Um, and the the event, being able to be, again, like I said last, last uh, uh, I think I mentioned it, right? He, trying to be, maybe it was a post. Being inside mm. the ropes. Oh, right okay, being yeah. inside the ropes catting for yeah. somebody um it was very well managed um apparently on saturday they were going to have a bigger fly mart in the evening but just the amount of tents and people selling their product mm-hmm. without prior to that fly mart happening was awesome because you know who, who we saw there who's that dyer's guild oh cool which we have one of those items we do um i talked to him we i just wanted to assure him soon. assure him that mm-hmm. it is in the queue oh it's in the queue it's in the queue <laughs> um it, but him and uh one of the other guys were there so i said hi to them mm-hmm. um i didn't catch stokely but he i saw he was there at, um was just walking around um and then there's a bunch of product you know there's a bunch of other other companies out there uh, selling their goods so uh and then artists were there okay. painting a bunch of stuff, which was really, really That's neat. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so there was a couple things that happened during this event. Well, actually, firstly, before we get to that, is there any questions you have about a major? Because the only other, I almost said major, the only other tour event that I've been to was SFO, yeah. San Francisco Open, which was basically the event that was happening prior to it moving to Stockton. Gotcha. Um, and that was at, I think, Glen Eagles in San Francisco. Um, I did get to go to that. The difference? Mm-hmm. Immense. Really? Yeah. The production, obviously, because it's been six years and or more and, right. and everything's blown up um, with the network and everything. Like, everything. It looked... I mean, obviously, there's still some things yet that can be cleaned up. But overall, like, it was very... Uh, very well handled um and it looked professional it felt professional uh the players seem to be treated professionally um the the course was it was a golf course but the way it laid out and being able to actually walk it was like this is these are far holes like some of these right. some, like their par threes are like four 30 404 right. puts like, it more know, into perspective when you're actually looking at it first yeah. person you're like oof that is quite and a they're ways. throwing that far with a mid right right mid like range putters and you're like I'm, oh. I'm i'm not even getting near that with a distance driver <laughs> you know <laughs> right um but it was it was really cool to walk both days um the there were a couple other players there from up this way uh, we saw uh, um, a couple of the um, club um, presidents, I guess. Okay. Yep. N- local local people were were a lot of local people because it's the closest thing to Sacramento sure. area for a for a tour event. Um, but yeah, it did was you really... follow the main card or the chase card at all? No. So they actually, I got back 
before the uh, lead cards teed off. Okay. So um, just seeing him like, see, okay. So Roger got in, right? He played the previous weekend, the OTB uh, age-restricted division because he's right. pro 40s, pro 40, um, MP40 division. Uh, and then he got into this one just because his rating just got to the point in which he could get in. Nice. And he got in, right? So he didn't expect, like, he wasn't last because there were several okay. DNFs, okay? <laughs> so, hey, hey, I've been hey, there. you're not last. I've been there. You are not last. That's, yeah. You're not last. Yeah. Um, I've been there. So seeing him throw and how he was throwing and then seeing the lead cards throw and going just jaw on the floor. Right. And uh, fl like, I, w I would have liked to have seen them throw on a, on like a grip it and rip it hole. Um, but curious enough, actually, a lot of the holes weren't just distance. After walking it, there was a lot of trees in the way for your landing spots. The ceiling was quite low on a lot of the holes. Um, so it was very, again, Leonard Muse, I believe, is the one who designed it. Right. Um, very well designed. I'd say the only thing that, uh, so they had removed a hole in between 16 and 17 so the walk between 16 and 17 was a bit long. Yeah, okay. Like a bit long. Yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. And I've I kind of, you know, in the back of my mind figured that it would kind of be that way where, you know, you because uh, I've been watching so much on uh, DGN, right, where you're looking at it and you're kind of taking these distances for granted because they're yeah. all at the same caliber of play, right? So for the most part, you're just seeing them basically put them in the same areas right if they hit their their mark or what they're aiming for and yeah they may say what the distance is and you might go oh that's pretty far you know or you know while you're watching it you're like oh that might be kind of a lower ceiling but because the the skill is up there right you know they just they make it look easy they make right it look easy yeah so i kind of had this thing in the back of my mind where like it's it's probably not as easy as we think no. You know, like, and because no. a, a lot of these, when you're watching them, because I got to watch, you know, a lot of this while I was doing some other things this weekend, um, I would look up and, you know, see the hold or whatever. And you're like, ah, oh, these, this doesn't really look like, you know, it would be that hard. Right. And they, mm -hmm. they might need to make these a little harder is, is kind of what I was thinking. But from your perspective, do you think that's, that's necessarily true? No, I, I think obviously there were probably a couple of them that maybe, yeah. but overall, like the lines that were required for the big shots were specific lines. Right. Um, they had a lot of uh, little sections laid out mm -hmm. for OB or relief and all that stuff. Right. Right. Um, and the there were a couple guys that threw quite far. Um, there was a. I'm not going to remember your name. I'm sorry. It was a 14 year old on mm -hmm. Saturday's round and he was just bombing them. <laughs> and his roller game was ridiculous. Oh yeah. Like that is a good tactic on that course though. Rollers. Yeah. I, I did. I did quite a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, the layout was much better than in person than uh like you critique it when mm -hmm. watching it via the network right that's so, what i kind of figured it would be yeah like if yeah. you see these things in, in person you're like uh that's not as easy yeah. as it looks when now, i'm watching this now with that being said there are things that happen that aren't planned that end up causing a little bit of drama right there's always sure. the gates that happen at these events sure um i'd say there were two kind of Okay. One was prior to the start of the second round. Um, they, the, so when you get your cards together, um, mm. you have to tell them a set of rules, right? Kind of go over a few things. Sure. Uh, one of them was that, hey guys, we forgot to tell you yesterday, the first round, that there is a relief marked area, right? That 
you you need to throw out of it because it's it's specifically because I think one of them was um, there's some turtles or something that were oh, okay. that were in there right there was a lot of turtles in the ponds um, gotcha. so I think some of them had some some eggs that were being protected so uh, one of the things is that Eric Oakley went up when they told his card that he goes oh well I played from that area and they go. Right. Well, we're going to have to give you a two-stroke penalty. But now you, you didn't tell him though. So here's the thing. Apparently, it was marked on the T sign. I'm not positive, which I guess it would then be in the caddy book, I think. Yeah. However, if they're right then and there, kind of taking ownership of that. Yeah. And he's taking ownership and going, "Hey, I I I played from there." I think that personally, personally, because here's the thing. He said it. How many other people might have thrown from that section that did not? Yeah, true. Have the the integrity integrity to say something, right? Yeah. Because he could have just said, okay, I won't throw from there. Right. Even though I threw from there last round, I'll, I'll remember <laughs> not, right? So I think that's kind of, that's not good. That's not, if you're taking yeah. ownership and saying, hey, guys, we forgot something. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> then it, the round's already been done. The scores have already been um, uh, completed and submitted. Right. I think you're absolutely right, and this is why. Because if you have a player that has the integrity to come forward and say, hey, I did play from there yesterday, and then you penalize them for being honest, yeah, what kind of... I don't know, sense does that give the rest of the players? Yeah, right? what, exactly. What, what message is that sending to the rest of the players? Hey, don't be honest. Don't li- Whatever yeah, you do, yeah, exactly. do not be just honest. Lie. Yeah, right? Don't just, tell the truth. Just lie by omission. Yep. Right? Like, eh, yeah. don't, don't volunteer that stuff, right? Yeah. And some people may say like, dude, keep your mouth shut. They don't need to know. But at the same time, at what the same time, does that drive? Yeah, and at right? the same, and that's the thing too. Is like, yeah, there is an argument that if it was on the T sign, you should look at the E sign, true, just in case there's something there that maybe wasn't. It. I get that argument, but mm-hmm. it's how it was presented. But I will say, even even legally, you would have an argument because I've seen this before, where there is a sign that is posted about. There's an event going on. You cannot park on this street at this time because of this special event, right? Mm-hmm. And they posted it way up high on this, you know, basically a post, right? Yeah. And the person went to court for this and they said, hey, you know what? I parked there because normally you can. And when signs are posted, they're usually at eye level. height, yeah. So that's what I would be looking for. There, I, yeah, I parked there because I didn't see the sign up there because I'm not used to it being there. And the judge went, well, yeah, you're right. Threw it out. Oh, okay. So even legally, yeah. if you're posting think, something that's normally yeah. going to be, you know you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. there's a small technicality there where it's like, yes, you should look at the sign. Absolutely. Yeah. But if nobody has said anything about it, why would you think that it would be anything different than it normally is? Well, yeah, because that's another thing is when right. you're told those things at the beginning of the round, it's a reminder to say, hey, don't forget this. Right. We're telling you this because this is something that's right. not normal. Exactly. Because if 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 there were no turtle eggs or whatever there, right. then there would be no relief. So it's like going, hey, this yep. is an unusual rule, but for this event, blah, blah, blah. The fact, again, the fact and that they go, even hey, we forgot. On that course. No. It just so happened yeah. to be because there's a special circumstance. Yes, yeah, exactly. So that was, uh, and also actually, quick shout out to Eagle and James Proctor. They're actually right at this very moment out at Rockland. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I would have, oh, uh, well. had I had extra time, I would have tried to stop by and say <laughs> hi. But right. um, yeah, they actually, uh, uh, Roger talked to him and he, they came out for the for the weekly and to, oh, cool. to sell some goods and stuff like yeah. that if they can, donate right. some stuff for giveaway. So yeah. shout out to them. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Eric, it was wrong. It was wrong. Um, the other thing, I don't know if you saw this. Mm-hmm. So, And I'm horrible with which hole it was. Yeah. So there's a hole in which you throw from the tee pad straight over the water, which is mainly on the right side, but it curves over kind of, if you're looking directly at the basket, it does cross obviously. So you're throwing straight. If you're throwing straight at the basket, you're crossing water, right? 
and it's the one where the basket is raised and it's in tucked in a little set of trees. I think it's seven. I, I want to say I was like, is that seven or eight? I think it's seven. And yeah. there's two big reed bushes mm-hmm. at the back right corner or not corner, but right side of where the basket is right mm-hmm. prior to the basket. Madison Walker. I don't know if you saw this and you might have, if you looked at social media at all, cause there was a whole big deal about there were some divers in there oh, pulling they discs. Caught, yeah, okay. Did yeah, yeah. you see that? I did. Now, yeah. couple things. One, ninety nine point nine percent of the time that disc is gone. Right, it goes into the reeds. It's not making it back inside. I would say he was trying to do the right thing good on you but for that 0.1% chance or 0.01% chance I don't care how thin if there was an angled stick rigid enough for that disc to hit I I know this sounds crazy I know Uh, this just hear me out hear me out okay it could have got in banked off that stick and gotten just safe enough there's crazier things that have happened there's sure. crazy. There are situations where the disc so hits a water. There's a chance. Yes. Yeah, there's a disc hits the water <laughs> bottle and it stays out. It hits a dog. It hits somebody's <laughs> foot and it bounces in. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Now check this out. So she, because it, he got lambasted, dude. He got yeah. uh, on social media. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think he did the right thing. However, I don't think he should be <laughs> attacked for it. Is it lambasted or lamb blasted? Is lamb blasted? Lambasted, lambasted, maybe. Um, lambasted seems like they're gonna like take one of those little turkey some, I knew you were like, gonna say that. Just based um, I, but, could be right though. Look it up. If you have a problem with it, email <laughs> yeah, me at nick <laughs> at discgolfshow.com. It does exist. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, the um, so Madison got on there and okay. said, "I feel bad for the guy because it was out." He goes, "The second I threw it, I was like, she knew it's not coming back." Right. And she apparently before she even threw it, she goes, Hey, can you, uh, can you get my disc? (laughs) You know? So yes, she, again, high possibility, pretty much almost a hundred percent chance that that it was not going to come back in from, from the look of it to now, it wasn't coming back. Now check this out. Some kind of freak thing. How about this? Right. Mm -hmm. So she has to re tee. Two yeah. penalty stroke, right? The throw yeah. and one penalty stroke, right? right? So she's throwing three off the tee. Yep. Did you know that there is a rule, PDJ rule, that says if there is any interference other than a player, you get a rethrow without penalty? Really? Yes. So after this whole thing ended, where did she finish? I think it was seventh. I want to say seventh. Uh, I think she was seventh, so, maybe yeah. eighth. I think it was seventh. In there. If she had saved those two strokes, or even one of them, let's say she just parted, uh-huh. right? I don't even know if she single bogeyed that. Either way, let's say she saves one stroke. Sure. That's a chunk of change now. True. That's a chunk of change that true should have been deserved. It was interesting because yeah, True. when 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 uh, somebody had posted that, um, and Roger had pulled it up on our drive back, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah did you know?" I was like, "No, I didn't know that, dude." I didn't goes, know that at all. A free rethrow with no penalty. So if I teed off and hit a squirrel, I could just retee. It's not a player. Okay. So in other instances, <laughs> I would say this would apply definitely to, well, no, because people have hit, like, I think animals are part of the course. Are they? Okay. I want to say. Okay. Um, but there are, there have been in the past, back when we did the show back in the day, where the disc was coming in and it hit uh, somebody's water bottle and it stayed out. Oh, yeah. Rethrow. Yeah. And no penalty. Now, how recent has this rule been applied? I'm not sure when it got implemented, but Mm -hmm. the fact that it is a rule in the PDJ right now and she got dinged for it is kind of messed up. It's kind of messed up. Yeah. 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 She should have been able to. But she's super chill. Obviously, she's not going to be like that guy. You know, (laughs) know. 
but um yeah. yeah it was a uh, it was really really fun um going out and walking it, it was warm it wasn't hot surprisingly mm. enough it was like low 80s oh that's not too bad then yeah it wasn't too bad um and then uh yeah came back home watched the rest of the uh um mpo event and the while we were out there you definitely heard fpo finish up <laughs> right you're walking around and you're <sighs> yeah right <laughs> um and up to that point mm-hmm Ella finally got her first DGPT win. Finally, yeah. Yep. So she's she's been up there several times yep. um, over the years, but uh, she was actually closed it out, and she closed it out with a, what seven stroke lead or five or something like that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she was at negative twenty five, which was actually the same score that Paige Pierce had the year before at the same event when she oh, really? won it as well. Okay, well that's the. Yep. That's, that's, that's the, the number to hit, apparently. Yeah, that's the marker, 25 which, under. Huh? Which I found kind of interesting. And she came in last year in fourth place. That's, yeah. That's four. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Uh, but this year, yeah, she she took it all with the same score that uh, that Pierce had. And Pierce, since we're talking about this, much better. Yes. Much she better did. on this she one. She did, yeah. She, uh, like I said, was negative 25 last year, won the whole thing. Um, but this year she came in fifth and mm-hmm. she was down six for that round and down 14 overall, which yeah. that's really good. Yeah. Especially good, how good she's sign. been playing lately. So yep. it's a good sign. I think maybe, maybe she's like getting back into it now. Like that, that rust has fallen off. I'm hoping Hope, right? hopefully getting more yeah. comfortable. Right. Cause I know there is that injury there. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Also another player I'd like to point out is our second place. Right. Second place, do you remember who that was? Cat. Cat, exactly. And last year, she was tied for eighth uh, at this particular event. And she looked really, really dialed in and focused oh, on yeah. this one. Yeah. By herself, took took separated herself from the crowd and, and took second place outright. Yep. And uh, looking much, much better. Now, I'm, I'm wondering if that'll be consistent. Um, She, she has the She's been the up talent there to do it all year she right? has the tools needed right it's just consistency again it's the consistency it ultimately thing. comes right. down to that with anybody though right you know who took uh second place last year no i did not own scoggins oh okay yeah. well she took fourth this year but she took second last year and she, she was on fire this year five, too dude yeah yeah exactly like in this event i mean on. that's that's one thing i think uh, you know and I, and maybe it's because I, I really wasn't watching last year that much or really for yeah. like five years, but uh, I've kind of, I've seen her like, Oh look, Owen Scott, she's pretty good. Look at her putt. Right. And, uh, and taking these events, but I've kind of, I don't know, almost discounted her in a way out of the wind, but I, I don't think you can. Cause she's no, you can't that close with, with her. Well, check that this out. Close. Roger told me during the first round, mm-hmm. the hole, that's an Island hole. That's mm-hmm. the uh, 12. I think it is where it's a constant feed. Where the guys oh, were just okay. throwing straight over to yeah, the yeah, island yeah. for a par three, and the yeah. girls, um, or sorry, FPO, were mm. throwing short and then over. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was a par four for them. Apparently, Roger told me that Own shot up to the edge and drained it from across the. Yeah. <laughs> across the. For an eagle. Yeah. Dude, that's so. Yeah. Dude, being there. Right. It's it, okay. So from the guy's T, mm-hmm. I think it was 318, all water carry. Yeah. You're going all and, and to an island. Right. Um, so maybe coming up, you're at 230, maybe. Okay. I would say maybe two. Let's say two. Okay. Um, dude, for an eagle. To just drain it across <laughs> a, a pond, dude. Yeah. That's so sick. There, there were a lot of impressive eagles on on both sides, dude. FPO and MPO. what was it? Um, Cupcake eagled a mm-hmm. uh, par four. Yep. Barella eagled a par five. Yep. Uh, which is, I think, was the eleven hundred foot or something, a thousand seventy, or maybe it was eleven seventy one. Yep. I, dude, dude, As walking I, those holes, I'm like. Ezra Ader hole on six. Ezra was eagle. on at this this yeah. event too. That, um, guy, that eagle was pretty impressive too. Yeah. Well, he got he got a course record negative thirteen, right? Yep. 
Nope. Or 13 down. 13 down. That's not negative. That's a bad <laughs> connotation. I'm sorry, right. Brody. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He, I totally to agree. That, I totally get it. He okay. mentioned that in one of the things. Uh, yeah, okay. he goes, right. can we not say negative, blah, blah, blah? <laughs> it's blah, 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 down. And yeah, I'm like, he was talking I, to you. I get it. Yeah, I, and I agree. It just yeah. came out that way. Sorry. Sorry. You better apologize. Don't, don't attack me. To our Lord and Savior, Brody. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So it was uh, after, dude, like, I, I sit there and I go, I'm, I'm like, I'd have to be on it just to get an even. Oh, like, I mean, I'd have to be so on my game just to get an even out there. Right. You know, I have, I have parred every single one of those holes in my head. In your head. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was easy there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so who else? Who, what else? Who else won? Who else won? Uh, the guy that did it at the last uh tour event, making yeah. this his second in a row, yeah, which yeah. is, I think, we're probably finally, I guess, some people may say, uh, gonna be seeing more of that. Maybe, maybe, maybe now he's ready to get that major, get out there and get that that Heimberg action that I've yeah. been hearing about, yeah, right. Because uh, yeah, lasers, Mr. dude, Mr. Calvin Heimberg, two events in a row, which is super impressive, mm -hmm. and. Last year, which I found interesting, do you know what he placed last year? He was tied. I'll give you that. Sixth? Yep, you're absolutely right. Last nice. year, tied for six with who? Do you remember? Um, mm, Anthony Barella. Was it? And James Proctor. Really? Yes, sir. I know Proctor did really well last year. Yep. He, he, was, now, he was throwing very well last year. AB, though. Yeah, be very good. Yeah, because there's there's another well. gentleman that I saw again, and I and, I and I was happy to see him there. I'm finally yes into the final round, Macbeth. Yeah, finally yep. Macbeth. Yep. I'm seeing him again. Like yes, we've got it right. Going into I think it was hole three. Even he was still tied for fifth. Right. Well, going away, going into that last round, he was four back. Right. Yep. And that's where it stopped. He ended up at 18th, and he was tied with. A, B, and Aaron Gossage. Oh, okay. That's where yeah. he finally ended Goose. up. Now, another player that, and we've been seeing him all year in these events, was Waisaki. Yes. He had a fantastic final round. I mm -hmm. think he went up, I want to say, 16 spots at one point. Oh, wow. To be tied at fifth place in the final round. 16 spots. That's a good push. And then I think he ended up, uh, basically 15 spots up overall in that final round to tie at sixth. But that's a, that's an incredible push. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. To go up 16 Just spots in, one in, the round, last in the last round. round. Like, wow, what a phenomenal round for Waisaki. And I kind of want to, I, I almost feel bad for the guy. He's been playing so good. Just. He had, he has just, that gear though. Just, he does have that extra gear, you know, you know, Absolutely. But, He's still in it, and 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 I want to say we're going to see him win at least one of these. Yeah, he better win yeah. at least one of these because he's he's so close. Yeah, right. And it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. It's been and, a while. And he's he's still that caliber of player, right? Oh yeah, so, yeah, definitely. And definitely, and has, definitely has been showing it at least at this last event. So, I'm I'm excited for the next one. I did want to I'm say that the next um, uh, Roger's buddy who caddied for him the first round, uh -huh. uh, Chris. Um, just saying, uh, both rounds that I caddied for him, I uh, he did better. So <laughs> every just... round I caddied for him, okay. he uh -huh. improved. Yeah, well, that's, that's all I'm. That's all I'm saying. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, yeah. So he um, wasn't if distracted you're listening, by beauty. If you're listening, yeah, he was. You know, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. Right. I I'm just a little envious of you being able to be on the card with you, Lee. <laughs> did you catch it? I bet you did. Um, okay, so couple questions he did or no i didn't yep. i was in here i was all in here it's perfectly fine um i'll have now i'll just have to watch it again Ooh, are we getting awesome. to questions yeah yes we're okay. going to jump into questions all right questions well Let's seeing as how you know ella Can't and calvin one. shout out to you guys good wins good wins yeah okay so we discussed this on the ride all right do you think since they've renamed the divisions right ma okay. so there's ma for ams right ma1 which is that level before pro, right. before you try to push. Right. MA2, mm -hmm. intermediate, right? Right. MA3, rec, rec. recreational. Mm -hmm. Do you feel... MA4, my division. Yeah, I know. 
no, you're a wreck. You're, <laughs> you're, you're you're intermediate. Well, no, let's let's start off with a wreck. Never. You'll right. you'll easily right. get into intermediate. Okay. Um, do you think that an MA three recreational mm-hmm. division mm-hmm. should be offered yeah. in A tier events, and why? Yes sure. or no? Why not? Okay. All right. Yes, because. Uh, even though you're in rec, I think given the opportunity to play in a tournament at that tier would be helpful to those rec players, right? Usually your rec players are your new players, right? Like, you know, why not give them a chance to see what it's going to be like on the A tier? Uh, I don't really see a problem with it. I guess the argument against it would be, well, it's going to take more time because now you have yet another division there, right? So I guess I could see that. Um, however, what I don't know is if you're MA3, uh, does the top of MA3, are they eligible for like uh, winnings? Like prize winnings? Or well, cash for, or for, for the... AM divisions, you there's no cash for AM. Well, I mean, for prizes then, I guess? Or is yeah, that, they get is that something. Thing? They okay. get something. Okay. Yeah, okay. they do. So, yeah, I guess I could see the argument against it. Like, you know, that's more payout, I guess, in a way. Um so I don't, here's, I don't. I really don't see a problem with it. Is is there a reason that they shouldn't be there? So here's what we discussed. What I okay. discussed with Roger. Okay. <clears throat> a couple good points. Well, I'm interested. There's some. There's some. Yeah. Just look at it this way. Okay. There are tiers of events. Sure. Right. Pro tour, A tier, B tier, C tier, mm-hmm. X A, whatever. All the all the other sure. ones. Right. Age restricted. Blah blah blah. Right. But just in your general. If you're getting into and and I I I can see both sides, but I'm actually now leaning towards I don't think that rec division should be an A tier. Okay. Because if you look at it as tiers like that, you're building, right? You you go from an A tier to a pro, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So going to an A tier from a B tier, when you start out, it can be discouraging, not that it is to everybody. But one, it can be discouraging to see these guys bombing them, right? Yes, you get the experience of the tournament, but mm-hmm. you'll get that experience in a C tier tournament. Sure, absolutely. You'll get that experience in a B tier. Yeah, you know. So I think that A, a C, and B, I feel that there should be all divisions, right? Okay. I think A tier, you should do um, was it M A one? MA2 because then that's where you're trying to get in to the MA1 division. Okay. So you can gauge yourself against those players gotcha. in the same tournament. Mm-hmm. And then like uh MA40, you know, the mm-hmm. uh, age restricted because most of those guys have been playing for a while, so right. whatnot. I think the entry level tiers mm-hmm. are best suited for the entry level divisions. Okay. Does that make some sense? I, I could see that that argument too. I'm not I, against I, I, it, but I I'm definitely lean towards it takes. And again, you could include so many more MA one or MA two players in those A tier events, which are those bu- sure. building blocks to try to build your game to ultimately get into tour. Sure, you know what yeah. I mean. I think yeah, I don't really have a problem with it either way. Like if they were like, yeah, MA three, you can't be an A tier. I don't I don't really think that would be a major loss. But I also don't really see it as a a major con if they are there. I don't know. Because it's not like, I, I guess in my mind where the separation is, is like there's A tier, then there's like tour level or your, your pro, right? Like yeah. maybe that's why I don't, I don't have as much of a problem with it. But Because that's the hard you, delineation, the hard line between. Yeah, right? Like your A tier, your two, right? You know, like, so maybe that's why it's not as, I don't know egregious isn't the right word but like it's not as big of a deal well there's not i, but, I feel um, like I but feel, if you but if you had them you know ma3 restricted to b and c i don't see that as a problem either yeah i think that would uh i think i just think it would help uh clean up and for uh, honestly for just for td's sake too because yeah. one less thing you got to worry about True. in that division or True. in that in that tier tournament you know you're concentrating yeah. on those people that are trying to move up and be more professional yeah. to get to it. But yeah, again, like I'm not a hundred percent against it, but I definitely am probably 
a solid 75 25 i, I could see the argument you know? for not having ma3 there yeah and and i'd be okay with that yeah yeah um so that's a if you guys have any opinion just uh shoot in the comment below um Absolutely. and send us an email if you hate my take on that nick at disc golf show.com show. <laughs> um so another question All one right. other question for you okay if a division has only one person competing in it, <laughs> mm -hmm. should that division even be offered? And if it is offered, should that be considered a win for that single player in their division? I guess, well, I would generally say no. Don't just throw them into the next division whatever it is but there might be a scenario and a circumstance that i'm not thinking of where that probably wouldn't be okay but i'm i'm hard pressed to find one of those i mean the only like if there's only one like i don't know ma40 or something right just throw them into the ma1 ma1 yeah. or something you know like yeah. i or give them the choice. You want to go ma one or ma two? Like where you where you, where you at? Right. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I really don't see that as a big deal. Um, but making an entire new division just for one guy, I think, uh, or one person, like. Well, meh. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Which there are. So as a spon as sponsored players, mm -hmm. their contracts for wins. Everybody knows this. For wins, they get bonuses. Sure. So, when you're playing in a division by yourself against no one, that's not a win. That's playing no, that's, by yourself. That's just therefore yeah, you're the tournament. it's kind of gaming that system. Yeah. See, that's, you know what I mean. See, like that's I another think weird more... part to it. I think there's more cons than pros yes. for you winning in a division and by yourself. Eh. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Maybe, yes, you want to play in that event. Maybe that event hasn't gotten to the level in which it's attracting enough people for your division. Right. It's not a bad thing. It's just how it is at this point. Sure. Will it get there? Yeah, I'm sure it will. Sure. The way disc golf is going. Yeah, it will. But maybe it's, not it's just not the right time. Maybe just step back and go, okay, well, maybe, I, maybe I'll learn something from moving up a, a division. Yeah. Maybe I won't, but I'll still have fun. You're out there sure. playing disc golf. Maybe you can practice your game so that, that way when you do go up against other people, enough people in your own division, you're that much more honed in your skills. Absolutely. Because you're trying to keep up with this other division. You're seeing their techniques and their lines that they're taking, what they're throwing, how they're throwing, that you can then include into your toolbox. Absolutely. So I think, and again, again, TD purposes. Way less You're overhead. having this whole other division that that person's got to manage yep. for a single person. I think, I think just because how do trophies go first, second, third? Right. Have three people sure. need to create a division. Then, then there's at least some kind of competition. Yeah. Two, at least you're competing against somebody. Yeah. But I think a solid three that we have the the um right. full set of trophies. You know, I think yeah. there should be some sort of uh, um, specification for divisions to be included in tournaments. Yeah, that makes sense to me. But yeah, I thought I'd throw that out there. No, you know, that's a good question. I, I think so. Um, if you think that I'm wrong, comments below or negative. Or just stop watching. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Skipace.com. How's your I... fantasy league going? Ours, Ken. You won again. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it's kind of uh, it's old news mm, at this point. Great. I mean, congrats. Good for you. You know, but <laughs> Nick's not doing too well. I hope you do great. He's not doing too well. I hope you win he's the not whole happy. year. <laughs> oh, he's definitely. You're already going probably to, just by what you have right now. Yeah, he's probably. You could not already. play the rest. You could not change out any more people. Right. <laughs> for the rest of the year. Nick's trying to get a win. He's, That's what's happening want, right now. I just want more. I want to beat more people than I don't. Just once. Even if it's even. Because if I get third, mm -hmm. I lose to two. I win to two, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Just, I just. 
This is why I don't gamble, folks. This is why. This is why that's, I do not gamble. That's where I've been at all year. Like third place. And nobody's Getting talking to you. Nobody's asking. By Ken and Ben, <laughs> dude, they but are at just least dominating. You. They're dominating, dude. <laughs> and it's so sad Which, too because during the rounds, my name, I've seen it pop. Oh yeah. And I'm like, ooh, I might get a first second. Maybe you know that would be cool. And then yep. just drop to fourth. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Roger. Not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Roger. <laughs> That's the guy who should be complaining here. No, he didn't even care. <laughs> he, he even said, he goes, he goes, dude, I haven't even been switching out my players. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah. And then I go, gave up. then I go like this. I go, you do realize that when you're, when you have your lineup and the bench players, that there's a little green line oh, around and the red. He goes, yeah, what is that? I'm like, oh, so Roger, Roger. The, actually, and the only reason I knew was because I was like, what is the difference? So I looked up the person with the red. Right. And I noticed they weren't on the yeah, PDG. I think you actually told me. Registration page. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, dude. Because I was going red, through the whole thing of like. Switch them out. Looking just, up like who was actually he, playing. And you're listen, like, no, red. And I shouldn't have told him dude. because now he's going to just be beating me. <laughs> and I'm just going to be last, guys. I'm going to be last. I'm fine with that. Yeah, whatever. I'm fine with that. It's fun. It's definitely fun. I'm just saying, for the first and second place, there's prizes. So well, also, I think next year we bump it up to ten people. We could. I think that's what we do. Yeah. Would you guys like to join the DGS Podcasters League? Yeah, we'll open it up next year on skipbase.com. Comment down below. And then we can just hand out more prizes to to people that yeah, we can soundly hand us. We can up it. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. at least at least have a first, second, third. Oh, absolutely. You know, trophies yeah. or something. Yeah. You and I are not eligible for that thing. anyway. Yeah. So, so you're only matter. battling against s- seven other people. Right. Next year. True. Next year. Yeah. Next year. Next year, guys. Yeah. And, and you're real, hey. realistically, you're also battling against Nick because if you beat him, no, then you I can don't lord care. that over him. I don't care. Yes, he does. I don't, yeah, I do. I don't care. See that? See that look in his face? <laughs> Maybe He's even so we get to 20 people if a lot of you like it. <laughs> then I can lose to eight, 18 or 19 of you. I'm even more for this. Perfect. All right, guys. You know what else I'm even more for? for? What's that? Um, uh, wait, 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 wait. Discounts. It's discounts. That's what yes. I was going to say. Yeah, you got it. Uh, it. Did you Did you want to talk about this actual, this yes. new you discount? You can start that talking talk about, about it. Okay. And you want to show it? So would you like to display... Your favorite disc? Do you have an ace disc? Is there one that you got signed? Is from your favorite pro? Is there some reason that you would want to display a disc somewhere? Well, good. Here's a company for you, and here's a discount for you. And this is just for a limited time. You can use the code Disc Golf Show 20 in all caps at discplays.com. That's D I S C P L A Y S. Dot box, com boxes and boxes use that code save 20 percent off and it's only for a limited time so if you want to get your hands on one of these do, do it, it quick. quickly um oh, what are, are cool. they what are they well he's opening the box for you right now and these are display cases for your discs disc and display disc display and these things are sweet. or sorry disc plays disc plays yeah Even but better. they're displays you can set yeah. it up for it. display. That is awesome. Oh, these are they're this well is made. heavy yes. duty. Yes, like the website does not do these justice. Yes, this is wow. We, we we're probably going to do a giveaway of one of these at some point. Oh yeah, we have to. They have the hanging I'm, things on oh, the back. Yeah, they already have the. Uh, yep. Look at that. And I've they seen these, and I I uh, um, I've wanted to get my hands on Just these. So big these shout out them. again to Disc Plays um, for sending us uh, some samples here. Ooh. Yeah, but see, look, yep, little, see, uh, watch the top. The top slides open, brackets. top slides off. You slide your disc in. Oh, there you go. Grab yeah. this wild honey here. There you go. I should actually probably go this way. Probably, yeah. You need to take the little paper out. Um, Slide this puppy back on. Oh, look, mm. he has uh, disc displays etched in the top, too. Yeah, that's, that's cool. pretty cool. I don't know if you can uh, see that. Right there. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. And then, oh, this is really hard to do. All right. Really cool. Boom. Super cool. Yep. 
And then you got the little nubbies on the back. So there's like these two little rubber nubs on the back where you could like, you know. Well, that way it doesn't lean. It keeps little, it nice and straight. Or if you mount it on the wall, yeah. And then you got your two little anchor points there already that are built into the back. And then the bottom touches the wall. So it's nice and even. Yeah. That is awesome. Super that awesome. looks really neat. Look at that. It does. It looks makes it that looks wild cool. honey look even more impressive. And then that. you get like the nine of them. There. You have a little tic tac toe ac <clears throat> action there. Oh, there you go. Or you get like a hundred of them because they're awesome. And okay. if you get a hundred of them, and use, use the code, code Disc Golf Show twenty, you get twenty percent off. So you actually only pay for eighty of them. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's staying it's right there. That's too. staying. Thank you, Disc Plays. Yeah. Um, go check them out, discplays.com. So D I S C P L A Y S dot com. Yep. And discount code Disc Golf Show 20. 20. Yep. All caps. We'll be doing another probably video on that as well. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Just get it out there because yeah. it's only for a limited yes, time. Do it so now. Do it now because that discount code is going to go away. Yes. And now you got to pay full price. Save yourself some money. They're yeah. really cool. They're sick. And it's a very good way to keep that disc uh, in nice shape for a very long, long time. That is that is heavy duty. I'm actually super impressed. Right. I, will. I was looking at them <laughs> yeah. on the website. I'm like, you know, how good could they be? And then I got my hands on one. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, like, is it, is it thin plastic? Yeah, like, yeah kind that's of, what I was thinking, yeah. kind of. But no, it that's pretty protective. legit. Very yeah. protective. It feels solid, and it's heavy. Yeah. Heavy, way heavier than yeah. I thought. All right. Do you want to save more money? Always. All right. Good. Because we're going to give you more opportunities to do that. If you go to discdrifters.com and use the code DISCGOLFSHOW, you can save 25% off of select property. So are you planning a trip to watch that tour event? Do you need yourself a hotel? Do you need yourself maybe some airfare? Well, good, because discdrifters.com can help you do that. And you can save 25% off while you do it by using the code Disc Golf Show. Isn't that great? That's great. Save yourself some money. Do it now. Are you also in the market Yes. for maybe a new disc golf bag? Well, good. We can save you some money there, too. You can use the code Disc Golf Show. See what we did there? Disc Golf Show. We're making it easy for you. <laughs> and you can save 15% off of your purchases at Upper Park Disc Golf. So you need that bag. You need that piece of swag. You like something at Upper Park Disc Golf. Might as well just go there, shop, save yourself some money. So use that code Disc Golf Show. Save yourself 15%. This episode was brought to you in part by Final Nine Sports. So make sure you check out their locations if you're here in California and can stop by Rockland or your Orangevale course and uh, support the local uh, shop out here. And if you're not, just support your local place at your course because that's what you should do. If you would like to send us an email or get in contact with us outside of the show and outside of leaving me a comment below on this video, you can use the show at discgolfshow.com. And uh, send all of those fun things there. I have one more thing before right, you go ahead. finish this out here. Go ahead. Um, to all the locals uh -huh. in the area, um, cross your fingers. Crossing. That new course Ooh. is coming up. It's coming soon, guys. It it's is. coming soon. Um, so I'm going to be extremely interested in your opinions on the layout and all that, all that stuff um, once it's in. Um, so there's still some cool things coming with that uh that weren't necessarily planned Ooh. but are, are going to be a benefit so okay uh, big shout out to those stepping up also um on the club side of that so sh you know who you are um big shout out to you guys because without the clubs right at all your local courses those courses would be gone yep so absolutely uh, quick reminder, hit the subscribe and like button. Check out all of our other videos on the channel. We got some good stuff and even more good stuff coming to you. So make sure you're hitting that notification bell so you know when they're coming. Because you wouldn't want to miss out, right? Everybody else knows and you don't. You're not the cool kid on the block anymore. That wouldn't be cool. But I think that pretty much does it. So for me and for Nick, we'll talk to you guys next time. But remember, in disc golf as in life, aim high and let it fly.